Hey, friend, Chris Van Viver here from WideLogicProRules.com. Now, over the last couple of days, I've shown you a couple of strategies to help you EQ faster and easier. First, we started with that low level noise that lives on most tracks besides the kick and the bass. And we just removed that using high pass filter and we isolated it using a low pass filter. From there, we identified the mud in some of our tracks in that 300 to 600 Hertz region. And we just made some minor cuts to remove some of that mud. From there, we use the console EQ to further shape our tracks tonally so that they're feeling more present and more vibrant in our mix. Then we examined whether compression should come before or after EQ. And we determined the best spot for the compressor based on an instrument by instrument basis. Now today we're gonna use the match EQ to help us further differentiate some of these tracks that have a hard time coexisting, such as the kick drum and the bass. But we'll also examine how to separate the vocals from the guitar tracks as well. So let's take a quick listen to our mix as it is right now. I'm feeling good about the bass and the kick, but how much do you want to bet that they could be a little more separate? So let's do that right now. On our bass track stack here, I'm going to go select the match EQ. Now I need to isolate the bass itself. So you can see that I've opened all my track stacks. I'm going to select the bass guitar that's playing in this section. Then I'm going to go open the finder to find the bass audio file. Go up to this button right here for the browser's window. We have our project browser. We can see that this base region is selected and the file is right above it with the little triangle that's open. So let's open up that match EQ. Let's select that base file and drag it onto the current tab. So now the match EQ has analyzed the EQ curve of this bass track. Let's now go find the kick drum. So I'm going to select the kick in track. Let's make sure that's selected in the browser here. So I don't see it being selected. There it is. Perfect. Now let's open up that match EQ. Let's select that kick drum track, drag it into the reference tab. So now the match EQ has analyzed the EQ curve of this kick drum track. All we have to do now is hit match. Okay, so this is a crazy looking curve and we're not gonna use it as is. But basically the match EQ has said, okay, our bass track sounds like this and the kick drum sounds like this. So I'm going to make an EQ adjustment to the bass to try to sound more like the kick drum. Now we don't want the bass to sound more like the kick drum. That'll cause the bass to mask the kick more, not less. But with this EQ curve, I'm gonna set the smoothing pretty smooth, about you know 12, maybe even push it further. We'll set it to 12 for right now, but I don't want the bass track to be hyper EQ'd with all these crazy curves. So I'm gonna keep it pretty smooth. I'm also gonna set the phase mode to minimal zero latency. And this is so when we bypass the match EQ, there's no like timing changes from bypassing and turning on. Okay, so let's now set this to zero and we'll play the kick and the bass by themselves. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna adjust the slider from 0% down into the negative region to separate the bass further from the kick instead of matching it to the kick. That seems to help a lot. Let's introduce the whole drum kit. All right, sweet. We could also do the same for the kick drum. So we can actually select the match EQ, drag it to the kick drum. But instead of leaving it in this negative territory, we're gonna boost it. Remember, the match EQ tried to match the bass drum to the kick. So this EQ curve is supposed to be representative of the kick. If I push it into the positive part of the slider, we're accentuating the elements of the kick instead of reducing them.
But since we're accentuating those elements, I'm gonna do a little reduction over here. That's a pretty solid difference. You know, I'm not going beyond 10% in either direction because once you go past 10%, then you're accentuating the different tracks in sort of an abnormal way. All right, now let's focus in on the guitars and the vocals. So I'm gonna place the match EQ on the guitars here. And instead of dragging in the guitars, because I have two guitars playing on the left and right, I'm gonna hit this learn button and I'm just gonna have the match EQ learn the EQ curve for the guitars. So here we go. And once you see the EQ curve stop moving around, then it's probably safe to turn off the learn button. Once again, I'll set this to minimal zero latency. Okay, now we'll drag in the vocal track. So let me just open up my vocals, find that track in here, perfect. So I'm gonna select this file and drag it into the match EQ. Okay, it's crazy once again, let's smooth this out. So maybe something like that, maybe even a little smoother. Okay, so it's a 24. I want this to be very smooth. I don't want it to accentuate in crazy ways. Set it to zero, and then we'll adjust based on how the vocals sound. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never tried to forget you. It's just an Okay, let's now hear with our match EQs turned off and on. So here we go. I never wanted to get you. I only wanted to be. I never tried to forget you. It's just an inevitability. I never knew what you went through. Pretty big difference, even with small amounts like 5%. Now let's hear before and after with everything turned off and on. pretty big difference, right? That's what I'm saying. Just use these five strategies, using the high pass filter to remove that low end noise, removing the mud from the 300 to 600 Hertz range. And you know, just be careful, be judicious. Don't cut from the same spot on every track. After that, use the console EQ to generally shape your tracks. So they pop out more. So they have more life to them. Start out with the compressor between the channel EQ and the console EQ. And then maybe for some tracks, you need to move the compressor after both the EQs. And after that, if you have some tracks that are having a hard time kind of differentiating between the two, a very common one is the kick and the bass. Use the match EQ to analyze both and set the slider in the opposite direction. So instead of matching, you're separating. So I hope these last five days have been incredibly helpful for you. I try my best to create the best content I can to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. I look forward to seeing the results that you get with these five strategies. Thanks so much again. Take care.